My brother Knights, when Father McGivney founded our order, Catholic families were in crisis. He created the Knights of Columbus to support widows and orphans and to strengthen the faith of the men of his parish. Generations of Knights have risen to fulfill this mission. We have grown from a small band of brothers in a single parish to a worldwide brotherhood of nearly two million men. Now we are needed more than ever. Today, the Catholic family is again in crisis, and so is our church. For decades now, the number of baptisms, confirmations, and sacramental marriages have declined. Hundreds of parishes and parish schools have closed. The Knights of Columbus cannot stand idle in the face of these developments. We must rise to this challenge, and we must reach a new generation of men. Just as our forefathers rallied to meet the challenges of their day, we must inspire the men of our day. We must reach out to meet them where they are. And when we do, we should show them that they are called to be men of charity, unity, and fraternity. It is in this spirit that we are taking action to make our order more accessible. The Knights of Columbus will soon offer a new exemplification ceremony. It will be rooted in our past and tailored to our present. It will inspire more men to join us, and it will engage our families and our parishes in a more meaningful way. And most of all, our new exemplification will empower the Knights of Columbus to advance our mission in the years ahead. Now, before I explain what the new ceremony entails, let me first address why it is so necessary. The current ceremony is a product of the late 19th century. At that time, the Knights of Columbus competed with other fraternal societies. In those days, men wanted secrecy. They also wanted the sense of progression that came with multiple degrees. That's why our founders initially created a system of two ceremonies. Over time, we added a third, and then a fourth. But the men of today are not the men of the 1880s, or even the men of the 1980s. In recent decades, we have found it harder to bring men, especially young fathers, into the order. And when we ask them why, we usually get the same answer. They tell us the system of three ceremonies is too time-consuming and too difficult to attend. They also tell us that secrecy is unnecessary, and sometimes it is even a deal-breaker. Many local councils often lack ceremonial teams or the manpower to organize degrees. And this means many candidates wait far too long to fully join our ranks. Some give up, and others never attain leadership roles. In short, our current system is often a stumbling block, not a gateway to membership. All this is a threat to our order's future, and we must find new ways to bring the men we need and the men who need us into our order. Our most recent Supreme Convention adopted a resolution from Illinois to consider combining our current first, second, and third degree ceremonies into one and removing the condition of secrecy. Following the Supreme Convention's action, I directed an in-depth review of our ceremonies with an eye toward staying true to our roots while at the same time presenting our principles of charity, unity, and fraternity in a more clear and convincing way. We undertook an inclusive process with supreme directors, state officers, and ceremonialists with many decades of experience in the exemplification of our degrees. The result is a new ceremony that stays true to our traditions while addressing the needs of our times. Instead of having separate ceremonies, all three degrees can now be conferred in a single ceremony. The new exemplification focuses on the history and principles of our order. It presents a fuller and richer understanding of who we are, what we stand for, and what we are called to be. Indeed, it harkens back to the simple ceremonies of unity and charity first approved by Father McGivney. And as you will see, 
our new exemplification can be performed in approximately 30 minutes. Our new ceremony also better reflects our commitment to our communities and our church. While it can be held in a council chamber, it is designed to also be held in the parish, with family and friends seated in the pews. They will see firsthand the organization their husbands, fathers, brothers, sons, and friends are joining, the principles and values they are committing to, and why it matters. Now, I recognize that this is a significant change. And like so many of you, I have a special fondness for the old degree ceremonies. Yet also like you and every leader of our order, I want to see the Knights of Columbus thrive and grow. The Knights of Columbus needs the men of today, and the men of today need the Knights of Columbus. Even in the 1880s, Father McGivney oversaw reforms that allowed his young organization to flourish. Looking back on those changes, our founder proudly declared, the Knights of Columbus is the same now as when first instituted. My brother Knights, I say the same to you today. We will continue to extend the hand of brotherhood to good men who want to be better men, so that together we may become great men men of charity, unity, and fraternity. This is what we have always been, and this is what we will always be. And on that foundation, I know the Knights of Columbus will continue to grow, renewing ourselves, protecting our families, strengthening our church, and building a better world. And now I encourage you to watch the following video of our new ceremony for the exemplification of charity, unity, and fraternity. Reverend Father, my brother Knights, ladies and friends, welcome to this exemplification of charity, unity, and fraternity. Let us stand and begin with prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Let us pray. God our Father, you so love the world that you sent your only Son to suffer die and rise for us and for our salvation. Give us the grace to daily encounter our Lord Jesus Christ with a living faith and so come to know in our lives the power of his love. Let us find in his cross the strength to rise above our sins and to be confirmed in virtue so that we may live our vocations faithfully and accomplish our work with integrity. Unite us, Lord, in the fraternity of the Knights of Columbus as we bear witness to Christ, serving the needs of others in charity and keeping the commandments in the spirit of the Beatitudes. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. By founding the Knights of Columbus in 1882, Father Michael McGivney sought to establish a fraternal order whose members lived the Christian virtues by means of the principles of charity, unity, and fraternity. He sought to unite members in their Catholic identity as practical Catholics, that is, as Catholics who accept the teaching authority of the Catholic Church on matters of faith and morals, who aspire to live in accordance with the precepts of the Catholic Church, and who are in good standing in the Catholic Church. By your presence here today, you pledge that this is your understanding and intention in joining the Knights of Columbus. 
At the time of our founding, Catholics in America faced discrimination and bigotry. Many immigrants were challenged by a hostile society that considered them outsiders and incapable of full citizenship. Often, these Catholics were tempted to abandon their faith and the sacraments. The father was the family's primary wage earner, and with no social support network available, frequently his untimely death was a catastrophic event. His widow and children faced financial ruin and the breakup of their family. Removed from their family's home, children often found themselves removed from their family's faith. Yet, in the face of these challenges, Father McGivney was determined to find a way to strengthen the faith and families of his fellow Catholics. Father McGivney's vision established our organization of local councils whose members sought to strengthen their faith, to serve the needs of others, and to protect their families through our insurance program. The first members of our order chose the name Columbus to emphasize that from the earliest days of European exploration of America, Catholics had played an essential role. Christopher Columbus was a revered hero in the 19th century who inspired the names of cities throughout the United States, including the nation's capital, as well as a province in Canada and a nation in Latin America. These early knights recognized Christopher Columbus not only as an explorer of extraordinary skill and daring, but as a layman committed to bringing the good news of the gospel to a new world. Our founding members chose to be called knights in recognition of the historic mission of Christian knights, men who led lives of virtue, defended the faith, and served those in need. In medieval times, when Christian knights took up arms and put on their armor, they understood that they were putting on the armor of our Lord Jesus Christ in order to serve a higher calling. A knight was committed to the cardinal virtues of prudence, justice, fortitude, and temperance. He was willing to sacrifice himself for others, especially the poor and the vulnerable. Although times have changed, this higher calling has not. Today, we do not put on armor made of fire and forge, but we are still called to put on the armor of Christ. We are called, as St. Paul tells us, to stand firm with integrity as a breastplate, carrying the shield of faith, wearing salvation as a helmet, and carrying the word of God as a sword. Our church is still in need of men dedicated to this mission, men willing to be the strong right arm of the church. The Knights of Columbus is a brotherhood in service to the Catholic Church, bound together by our principles of charity, unity, and fraternity. For Knights of Columbus, these principles find their origin and meaning in the Holy Eucharist. United to Christ in the Eucharist, we go forth seeing Christ in each other and in those we serve. Listen now to the lesson on charity. Gentlemen, the first and foremost principle of our order is charity, the greatest of all virtues and the crowning glory of a Christian life. But the true meaning of charity is often lost today. It is not merely a feeling, nor is it solely a gift of time, talent, or treasure. It is more than almsgiving, it is more than good works. The greatest act of charity the world has ever known is the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, who freely and willingly offered himself for us on the cross. Christ's redeeming love is the true measure of charity. Charity is a heart that sees Christ in our neighbor. And through the power of the Holy Spirit, we can, like Christ, make a sincere gift of ourselves to others. Charity is the virtue that gave rise to chivalry. It is the essence of knighthood. A Christian knight without charity was regarded as unworthy of his high calling. 
Charity is that priceless gift placed by God in the human soul to measure man's allegiance to his creator. Charity is a duty, not a courtesy. It is an obligation imposed by heaven upon rich and poor alike. Charity moves the heart to comfort and console, advise and instruct, bear and forgive. In God and with God, we love even those we do not know. This is the charity that evangelizes. This is the charity that gladdens the heart. Charity is our authentic witness to God through our good works. Charity is stronger and greater service to the community when we are united. Listen now to the lesson on unity. Gentlemen, to be a Knight of Columbus means that you possess unity in purpose and unity in action, which come from our shared Catholic faith and the grace of the Holy Spirit. It is appropriate that unity follow our first principle of charity, as charity binds together everything in perfect harmony. The unity of our order is founded in the sacred unity of our church, which arises from the unity of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Our unity expresses our belief in one Lord one faith, one baptism, and one God and Father of us all. The principle of unity is first experienced at home. Marriage is a unique and irreplaceable sign of God's love for his church. The faithfulness and fruitfulness of married love is the foundation of the family. And the Christian family is an icon of the loving communion within the Blessed Trinity. Brother Knights and their families encourage one another to establish loving homes that cultivate virtue and holiness. In a divided world where many find it difficult to truly encounter God, Knights of Columbus families live their faith, fulfill their mission, and evangelize the world. History offers countless examples of small groups of men who surmounted overwhelming odds because they were joined together by a common purpose. It is not on the size of the army that victory depends. Since our strength comes from heaven, Christ calls us to unity with him and with each other. To increase unity in our church and our families is one of the great missions of the Knights of Columbus. Our order prays and works to bring about the unity our Lord wills for his church and for our families. When we stand united, our order is a force for the defense of our faith, our families, and one another. Jesus told his disciples, remain in me as I remain in you. Just as a branch cannot bear fruit on its own unless it remains on the vine, so neither can you unless you remain in me. Whoever remains in me and I in him will bear much fruit, because without me you can do nothing. Now, we will impress upon you the strength men possess when united in pursuit of a common purpose. Candidates, please stand. Warden, distribute the fibers to the candidates. Gentlemen, break the fiber. Now observe, when individual fibers are bound together, they become a strong cable. As the fibers are to the cable, so are you to our order. 
The strength of any cable depends upon the quality of the fibers and their perfect union. Dedicated to the principle of unity, we pray with our Lord that his followers may all be one. Long ago, Father McGivney proposed an ideal model of unity for the Catholic men of his parish. He envisioned a fraternal brotherhood, Catholic men supporting each other and their families, united in Christ and building up his body. His vision continues today as his order works to strengthen Catholic families and parishes. Listen now to the lesson on fraternity. Gentlemen, a Knight of Columbus is a man of integrity. He takes responsibility for his actions. He is also a man for others. He guards and protects those under his care. He stands united with his brothers and with them. He puts his faith into action. A Knight of Columbus is called to fraternal charity with his brother knights and he is called to a fraternal unity with them. As the psalmist says, how good and how pleasant it is when brothers dwell together as one. United by baptism and the Eucharist, Knights of Columbus stand ready as brothers to bear one another's burdens. Where there is a spiritual or material need, we assist one another by prayer counsel, and practical support. Our Lord calls us to live in fraternal communion and to encourage one another. We follow the counsel of St. John the Evangelist, who told us, whoever does not love a brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. This is the commandment we have from him. Whoever loves God must also love his brother. Our bond of fraternity is not merely a lofty principle. It is the way of life of a steadfast Knight of Columbus strengthened by the Holy Spirit. It is the responsibility of every Knights of Columbus Council to be an exemplary model of Catholic fraternity. In times past, a candidate for knighthood spent the eve of his knighting in a church upon his knees, placing his sword and his shield before the altar of the King of Kings, his Lord and God. Today, Knights of Columbus continue to serve this same King, Christ the King, truly present in the Eucharist. While founded as an organization of Catholic laymen, our order has always had a special relationship with our priest. We owe our very existence to the vision and determination of one parish priest whose heroic virtue continues to inspire us today. The Knights of Columbus was, is, and always shall be a brotherhood in solidarity with our priest whose ministry makes present to us Christ in the Eucharist. You have heard that the virtue of charity is the guiding principle of our order. You have heard that there is strength when men work in unity for a common cause. You have heard that fraternity is an abiding fellowship with Christ and with your brother knights. As Catholics, we know that death does not have the final word. Our fraternal greeting is Vivat Jesus, which means, may Jesus live. With this greeting, we recognize one another as brother knights, and we profess the hope by which we are saved. The perpetual watchword of our order is Tempus Fugit, Memento Mori, which means, time flies, remember death. We must remain vigilant, for we know not the day nor the hour when we will be called to give an account of our life. We must prepare for our death spiritually. 
and it is our duty to protect those who have been entrusted to our care by God, to be good stewards and to safeguard their future. The financial protection of our families remains fundamental to Father McGivney's vision and the mission of the Knights of Columbus. To profess your commitment to our principles, I now ask our candidates and all our brother Knights here present to rise. Candidates and brother Knights, raise your right hand and respond, I do, to the following questions. Do you promise to conduct yourself as a Catholic gentleman and to live your life guided by the principles of charity, unity, and fraternity? I do. As a practical Catholic, do you promise to continue to form yourself in the Catholic faith, to live in accord with the precepts of the Catholic Church, and to participate in its sacramental life especially through attendance at Sunday Mass? I do. Do you promise to promote the well-being of your brother Knights and to support the mission and the activities of your council? I do. Having reviewed and signed the constitutional role, do you promise to obey the laws, rules, and lawful authority of the order? I do. Gentlemen, your promises are hereby accepted. Please lower your hand and be seated. Let us now invoke the protection of the Blessed Virgin Mary. As Knights of Columbus, we turn always to the gentle and glorious Virgin Mary, our Queen and our Mother. The order is entrusted to the protection of the Blessed Mother under her title, Our Lady of Guadalupe. Mary's love encircles us all, drawing us closer to her divine Son under the mantle of her protection. We take up her holy rosary. Mary, Mother of God, with her knights for the sanctity of human life in all stages. Mary, heart of the Holy Family, with her knights for faithful marriages and joyful families. Mary, the Immaculate Conception, with her nights for decency and purity in our world. Mary, to whom her son would refuse nothing, with her nights for justice and compassion for the downtrodden and all those who suffer. Her holy rosary in our hands, going where we go. The salutation, Hail Mary, on our lips. What challenge can we not face? What victories can we not achieve? I invite our Grand Knight forward to invest you with a rosary and the emblem of the order. Candidates, please stand. The warden will now escort you forward. Gentlemen, please present your hands joined as if in prayer to receive the rosary of Mary, our Queen. Carry it always and pray it as often as you can. Carry it always and pray it as often as you can. Carry it always and pray it as often as you can. Carry it always and pray it as often as you can. Gentlemen, you will now receive the emblem of our order. Wear it always with pride, dignity, and honor. 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 My brother knights, we welcome you as third degree members of our order 
with all the responsibilities, rights, and privileges accruing thereto. You may place your rosary in your pocket and return to your seat. Brother Knights, remember that the saints did not conquer nations by the sword, but by prayer and good works. Members of our order have been raised to the honors of the altar as saints and blesseds. The world continues to need saints. And the Knights of Columbus offers each of us today the opportunity to live a life of heroic virtue through the grace of the Holy Spirit. We have witnessed the promises you have made here today. Let them challenge you to live your life from this day forward, holding fast to our principles of charity, unity, and fraternity so that on the last day your souls, filled with happiness, may enjoy the reward of a life well spent, an eternity in the presence of God himself. Everyone, please stand for the closing prayer. The prayer for the canonization of Father McGivney speaks to our mission as Knights of Columbus. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. God our Father, protector of the poor and defender of the widow and orphan. You called your priest, Father Michael J. McGivney, to be an apostle of Christian family life and to lead the young to the generous service of their neighbor. Through the example of his life and virtue, may we follow your son, Jesus Christ, more closely, fulfilling his commandment of charity and building up his body, which is the church. Let the inspiration of your servant Prompt us to greater confidence in your love so that we may continue his work caring for the needy and the outcast. We humbly ask that you glorify your venerable servant, Father Michael J. McGivney, on earth according to the design of your holy will. Through his intercession, grant the favor I now present. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the peace and blessing of Almighty God the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Please join me in congratulating our newly invested third degree Knights of Columbus. Amen.